everyone. Welcome back. It's Casey. So today I have another two repairs on the table. Um, one that I am hoping this one is going to be pretty simple. The other one is potentially going to be more of an issue. So I thought we'd start with the easy one. Um, this one, she said that the neck is wobbly. So, um, let's see, I'm sorry. Her note says, this is little Ophelia. Thank you for helping her. Um, anyway, so she said her neck was wobbly and I did help her with instructions on how she most likely could fix the wobbly neck. So oftentimes the wobbly neck, all that needs to be done is some rubber bands added to the neck uh, peg on a jointed body. But this customer did not feel comfortable with that. Um, as oftentimes people just, you know, are too nervous. And so I have to say, um, I do understand that anxiety. I remember the very first, I can actually remember the first time I took a Blythdoll apart. So I know it's um, nerve wracking to take them apart. However, I do think this is a pretty easy fix. First of all, I just wanna say what an adorable doll. I don't know who the artist is. Blythe Therapy. oh, I don't know. Um, the only issue, and here we go with my, things are going to be easy and now they're not. I can already tell this is not the type of, um, body I was expecting. I believe this one has, um, a joint inside. So I'll explain kind of what that is when we get it taken apart. But I get this issue constantly in my shop because I do sell a joint and oftentimes people think that that joint goes to any type of doll and it doesn't. It only works on a specific type. And I think it's this, this one, um, but I could be wrong. And I feel the frustration from people about all these neck options. Um, and oftentimes people want me to have the answer to everything and Unfortunately, I just haven't worked with enough of the different types of faces and joint systems and bodies that are coming out. So without the experience, it's hard for me to help people, um, especially online without being able to see what is going on. So I'm glad she sent her in. I'm just hoping that we're able to solve the problem. So let's take her apart and we'll look at what's inside. Oh my gosh, you guys, as usual, as soon as I start recording, somebody's moving in, these big trucks are going by, and I thought, I'll just record through it. Then UPS showed up and rang my doorbell, and I've been waiting for something like a crazy person because I ran out of ink and I have orders waiting, and oh my God, okay, chaos. So let's try to get this part recorded, um, and I might have to finish it later. So this is a body that's been modified with a neck joint. This is probably one of my number one pet peeves questions in my shop right now is about these joints. It looks like it has broken. I'm not sure that I don't think it's supposed to be like that. Um, uh, and it looks like maybe it was held in with putty. I'm not really sure. I get this question so often because I sell this joint in my shop and many people think that this is all they need to add mobility to the body that they have and that is just not the case. You can only use this joint on the type of doll it was made for. Um, and I don't think this is the doll either. So the problem with this doll is most likely going to be that we have to change the body. I was really hoping this was a body that just needed some rubber bands, 
but as you can see, um, it has broken. I'm not sure if this was purchased or who constructed it, but I don't see any way to repair it and I'm not going to try because I don't think, um, you know, I, I'm gonna ask the customer what she thinks, but I don't think that it will be strong enough to try to glue it back together and have it work right. So I'm gonna send her some photos of this, ask her what she'd like to do if she wants to just purchase a body. I have white bodies um, with smaller bust size and she might actually like that better that I could change it to quite easily and um, get her fixed up. So as usual, not an easy fix. Let me get with her and we will take a look at this other one also. All right, so I gave the customer the option of me trying to glue this back together or purchasing a body and she decided to go ahead and purchase the flat chested boy body. So this body does have a tilt neck. It's not gonna be quite as mobile um, as the joint she had. So that will be the only thing about it. Um, you also probably aren't gonna wanna trim much on this one maybe a little bit, but I think we'll put the head on and we'll see how it feels. Um, the reason I say that is because this peg is pretty short on the inside, and if you trim too much, this peg will just pop out, so we don't want that happening either. So let's put her together and see how this body feels. As you can see, she turns very well from side to side. She is not looking down in any way. So um, oftentimes that's the complaint most people have is the doll is looking down too much. Um, so this body, she definitely won't be looking down. Sorry, I have to hold her up. And she can turn side to side. Um, and it is just more secure. We don't need to add any rubber bands because this joint um, is pretty, pretty sturdy. So let's put her dress back on and then I'm gonna go ahead and send a short video um, to the customer so she can see the mobility of the neck and we should be done with this one. I'm going to take the hands off her original body and trade them out since she probably liked these, the shape of these hands. Let's put her dress on first. So I love the innovation of Blythe. I love um, people inventing new solutions like neck joints. Um, but I'm a little crabby <laughs> about neck joints because I almost daily get the question, um, of how to make the neck more mobile. And I'm not quite sure what collectors are doing with their doll where they need their doll to be looking in 360 directions um, because I never find with the dolls that I need more flexibility. Um, so maybe that's why it gets uh, difficult for me to answer that same question every single day. Um, but the joint that I sell in my shop, again, is not for mobility. It is to hold on the body for a specific type of Blythe doll, which is a fake NBL. And I think it also works on some of the newer authentic dolls, but um, your doll should come with it. So you really shouldn't need it unless you misplace it or you buy just a head plate of one of those molds. Um, so as far as other people selling joints there are a couple people on etsy that manufacture these type of joints i don't know if this was one this artist created or if they purchased it um i don't know and i don't have any experience with them so i get asked all the time about how to make the neck more flexible and i recently made a video about trimming uh, around the neck of the stationary neck bodies and my two solutions are either that or changing to a body that already has a tilt neck with the uh, movable peg. Um, that doesn't seem to satisfy a lot of people. I'm not quite sure why. I don't find it to be an issue with my own dolls. Um, so anyway, just kind of a pet peeve and I feel like 
hopefully this answers questions about it. Um, I don't know, I probably will still get the question every day, but. All right, well, this one is done. Like I said, I'm gonna send her a quick video. I will send all her parts back and then I will grab the next one. All right, so this is the second doll. Um, so that first one ended up being pretty easy, I guess. This one I anticipate not being quite as easy. So what the customer told me is that she had an SBL doll and she attempted to, I think, change the eyes and she put her in water and then was unable to get her open and was worried that um, she would be wet inside and potentially rusted. So I think it was that she, oh, I know what it is. Here my note is, her, she has a, a gaze situation. So she looks very far down, um, much more than normal. So she tried to fix the gaze situation and when was unable to get her apart and submerged her in water and is afraid she is resting. Um, so she asked if I could attempt to get her apart and then also fix the gaze situation. So as you all know, I have become somewhat of the SBL queen around here. Um, I work on them quite a lot. They actually aren't as hard as People make them sound. I think most people just get impatient with waiting for them to open. I'm gonna look at her note here and make sure I got that right. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so it's really just her eye gaze situation. So because she soaked her and the scalp already looks like it's pretty separated, I think we're gonna just try to open her. If she doesn't open, then we may soak her more. I don't know. She must have just soaked the very, very top of her head because her lashes don't look like there is a problem with them in any way. She does look like she has a couple of pry marks. I don't know if that's from the owner or previously. And so one of the things about if you are going to do any prying, this is one of the worst spots because you want to sort of pry. There's a, a bar kind of inside there. And if you can get your little, whatever you're prying with down in there, you can actually pull on that little bar and the pry marks will be on that inside the doll and not on the face plate. So that's my suggestion you have to do any prying but I like her to be farther apart before we try that there we go so you can see that the prime marks are on the inside sometimes you can't avoid getting it on there a little bit So at this point, the problem is most likely the scalp being attached. Um, I can't remember on the SBLs, I feel like you have them, but now I can't remember. If I remember right, oftentimes the face plate will come off. So let me look, let me remind myself here. So this is an SBL that I'm working on for the open mouth video. 
And you can see that this one, the scalp is not coming off the back plate really at all, maybe a little bit. So I only had to take off the front and the way it reconstructs itself is it goes up, it has to go down in there. That's what makes it so much harder to take apart. So I think we're gonna see if we can get off the front plate, but it feels really, really stiff. And I'm not quite sure why, because it doesn't need to be, shouldn't need to be cut should just be glued. So it is a situation that we might need to soak her more. I hate to do more water though, because then we risk getting the lashes wet and getting other things wet. So I think, let's see if we can work something down in the scalp area. Because normally what I do is I kind of just pull it and sort of shake it back and forth and it usually loosens the glue, but it does not feel like it's budging, which is weird because the scalp is coming up a bit. But I think it's not enough really for me to get a tool in there either. not look like an SBL to me. This looks like, um, this is what one of the, the, um, what are they called? The Ashton Drake ones looks like where you have to actually cut the scalp off and re-glue it. So I really don't, I'm sure she's gonna tell me to go ahead and do it, but I really don't wanna cut this scalp off because um, there's always the chance that something might get nicked and it won't be a perfect seam, although this doll has bangs, so it will be fine, but I think I want to ask her first. So I'm gonna send her a message, just confirm the doll, and maybe, maybe I am just not clear but SBLs typically like I said I can see inside there and it does not look like this um, so I'm gonna send her a message really quick and tell her what I found I'm sure we can fix whatever the problem is if we can get in there so I'm sure she's gonna say go for it but let's ask her first um, before we do such a invasive procedure so I'll be back all right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. I did confirm with her it's an SBL, um, but I don't know why she feels so stiff. So where did we start cutting?
Okay, so the scalp is separated. Let's see. Doesn't. Oh boy. <sighs> we did it. Okay, so. I see what the issue is. The part of the dome that is attached to the faceplate is glued too heavily. So you can see it's down in there. So that's okay. We'll be able to put it back together. So, and actually the spring doesn't look too rusted. So I haven't hurt her too badly. Um, we should be able to fix this up pretty easily. So let's and actually she didn't say if she wanted to do, so there is a little rust from the spring. I'm gonna ask her really quickly, did she want the sleep eyes? Because I would like to um, do strings if possible. So I don't think there's any malfunction. I think she just needs to um, have her T-bar trimmed, honestly. So let's let's just do that and see if that fixes her gaze. Now, the SBL T-bar is slightly different, so you gotta be really careful when you trim it that you don't over trim it because it's hard to find another SBL. looks a lot better. Maybe a teensy, teensy more. So if we are going to change her strings though, I think we better take the mech out. rusty string off. And now I just need to know if she wants the two strings or the spring. I do have a little spring here. The lashes are in good shape. So basically, um, to put this back together, we're going to push everything down in there and hopefully her plate looks still good. We may have to pull out some of that and cut off some of these parts that are dangling. But we should be able to piece it back together when she's on. But I haven't heard from her yet on the string, so I think we'll wait and finish this one tomorrow. It's getting late in the day here, and I'm gonna make sure I have light. Um, I think we'll wipe out her inside a little bit. Front plate looks good. Back's a little dirty. Get her put back together when we hear on her strings. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right, everyone, we're back with this little SBL. Her owner wants to put the spring back in and not do sleep eyes. So we're gonna do our best. It's not my favorite to put springs on um but i actually get asked i recently got asked about doing it that's what's so funny about some of these videos is people ask me if i have a video on how to do something and i don't because it's something i don't do very often and then luckily it comes up so we're gonna do it today and i'll show you how i do it um 
it's still, as far as I know, no real easy way, which reminds me, I don't have my tweezers. So I'm gonna grab those. You will need tweezers usually helps. So let's grab those. Okay. So as for the string, that needs to go in first. And we're replacing the string because the string was a little bit rusted, the original string. So let's put a fresh one on here. I have cleaned out the face plate or the back plate. Got any rust and any of the dirt that was, there was a little bit of dirt in there. I got all that out. So she's nice and clean and fresh. As you can see, um, the original problem with the doll, the eye gaze looking down, we have corrected. That part was pretty easy. The difficult part is because she is an SBL. And I'm hoping when we put her back together, we aren't gonna have to use any glue. Okay. So for the spring, the difficult part about the spring is getting it around the places it needs to go without bending it out of shape because it needs to keep its shape in order to spring back. Also, if this little opening here is too big, it can fall off of where it's supposed to be. So sometimes you have to kind of pinch them down and it's, it's really kind of hard to do. Um, but it goes on this spot here. So if we were giving her sleep eyes, this is where we would put the other string. But if you're putting a spring back on, it goes there and then it goes down on this. So um, that's the reason why it's difficult to get on there because you have to be able to hold it and, and work it in there. I don't even think you'll be able to see and I don't even know I don't know that I've tried to do it with the hair on. Maybe I have, I don't know. It's not my favorite thing, <laughs> springs. And I think I'm actually gonna start the other way. I'm gonna start with it in here because this seems like it's gonna be the harder place to get to. And I feel like the times I've done it before, I've held it with tweezers, but just like that it came off so i'm gonna have to put it on there and pinch this down a little more so it stays so it's probably going to take me <laughs> a few tries and a lot of swearing so i'm probably not going to have the sound on the video Okay, hopefully that stays. I'm actually gonna put her on a piece of cloth here. I'm always afraid of getting a scratch on someone's doll. Um, so 
my strategy here is going to be to try to pull this up and get it around that spot. All right, so I got it. So that's good. Now this string needs to go out the back, which I think we probably should have done before we put the spring on. I'm hoping I can get it through there. Okay, so I'm happy that she's looking up. Everything went back together. Her spring is on. All of that is good. Um, the only thing is, is I'm going to check with her owner and see what she wants with this front. I think we might put a little bit of glue in there just so she doesn't have quite a big gap. I did tell her that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use some E6000 glue. I'm not gonna use super glue on there, um, but I wanna check with her first and make sure that she's okay with where the gaze is. I mean, I don't think it could get any better, but I don't wanna use any glue until I'm positive. If she's happy with her gaze, then I'm gonna go ahead, put a little glue in there, um, and she'll be done. So that was an exciting one, different one. Let's put her little pull ring back on. So we can send a photo. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe as always. I should be back soon. Um, I have some video ideas in mind to get kind of away from some of this repair video stuff. Um, but I just have been really busy with all the other stuff going on. Um, but those things are calming down. So hopefully I'll be back with some new topics soon. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.